In this video, we're gonna do a really quick rainbow themed cake. It just so happens to be close to St. Patrick's Day, but this is a great design for any time of year and it's fairly simple to do. It's just a matter, really the hardest thing is tinting all of the rainbow colors. Uh, so I have all of those in styrofoam bowls waiting for us. And I have here a six inch double barrel cake and just in case you've never uh, made a tall cake like this before, it's four layers of our white almond sour cream recipe. And I don't know if you can see it, but there's a cake cardboard halfway up. Beneath the cake cardboard is four bubble tea straws supports that have been cut down to size, just as you would for any tiered cake. The difference is with a double barrel, both tiers are the same size. And we do have a tutorial on double barrel cake construction. Okay, so after I crumb coat this cake, we're going to be piping on our colors. And I'm going to, rather than use a piping tip for each bag and couplers and all of that, it's just simpler to just trim off the very tip of these piping bags. So just as a frame of reference, you can think of about maybe a piping tip 12, a round tip, sort of a medium sized opening is what I'm shooting for. So I'm just gonna stack all six of my bags together and we'll just cut. And I'll fill each bag with a different color and we'll meet back. Okay, so here is our cake and I had just chilled it. This is the crumb coated cake. I just chilled it in the freezer long enough for it to get nice and firm. So maybe about 10 or 15 minutes. And you can also see that I've made marks here with a toothpick. I did it, you know, every so often so that I can easily use this as a guide when I'm piping on my color. The cake is just over six inches tall. And so I just measured out my marks at the one inch mark all the way up. And that's just a loose guide for how we're gonna pipe our color. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking I want to start my rainbow colors so that the red is on the top, but I find it easier to to pipe from the bottom and work my way up. So I'm actually working in reverse order. We're gonna start with our purple color. I'm just gonna pipe all the way around. And then, see I've still got a ways to go. So we'll just pipe again. And one more. I have about a half cup worth of buttercream in each bag. And I didn't even use all of that. Okay, next color is our blue. Okay, I'm just gonna pipe from the opposite direction just so it's a little more interesting to watch for you. I don't think you could see my piping before. So I'm just holding my wrist steady against the countertop and using my turntable to turn the cake. Um, got a little bit more to go. And it may not be exact, but at least it will be pretty close. So next we'll do green. And I'm just going to continue this pattern all the way up. Okay, so I have piped all the way around, all the way up. And it looks pretty even though we haven't smoothed it yet. I like all of the bright colors. The top is going to be cloud, so we don't need to worry about that. I'm just going to take this um, smoother, or I guess it's a bench scraper. This is Wilton. It's just a straight edge. It's nice and tall. If I didn't have this, I would just use my shorter bench scraper and I have to go around twice, which would be tricky, but as long as you wipe off your edge in between turns, you should be fine. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it right up against the icing. You want to make sure your icing is piped thick enough that it can withstand the scraping that we're about to do without 
showing any white beneath. Okay, so we switched sides just so you could see this a little bit better. I should be able to do this all in one turn, but if not, then you just kind of ease it off, wipe away the excess icing, and then start back up again. Okay, so I'm just gonna reach around. Ah, it's sliding. Okay, so now that I've completed the whole turn, I'm just gonna kind of take it away. Okay, so I have a couple of spots here that I can clean up. What happened? <laughs> Maybe you can reuse that. The hollow yet. I guess you're filling this um, Just wonder. I don't I'm worried it won't match up quite right. Okay. I don't wanna risk it. Okay, I don't know if you noticed I think I didn't put enough icing on the bottom of my cake or I didn't put enough icing on the turntable to keep my cake steady because it started to slide and that's not good. You don't want it to start sliding on you while you're trying to do this. Okay, I'm just going to, I have a couple of blank spaces that I want to fill and you may as well just pipe on a little bit more. Okay, and we'll just clean that up a little bit. So I'm just holding this steady. Under the red at the same time. Oh, I thought it was. Okay. Okay, okay I found another spot I had missed, so we just piped over that. So just hold it up gently. Gently scrape. I don't want to take away too much. And that fixed that. We'll let this crust and we'll meet back and smooth it. Okay, so our icing has now crusted and we know that because we can just lightly touch it and the icing doesn't make a mess or come off on my fingertip. So we are in good shape. We're gonna go in with our Viva paper towels and we use Viva because they don't have any quilting or impressions. And I'm just also gonna take a fondant smoother, smoother paddle. If you don't have one, that's fine. Just use your hand and we'll just gently apply pressure and just go in a side to side motion that will minimize the colors sort of blending into each other which isn't a problem you you know with this type of cake you're gonna have some variation in the width of the colors and you know one might slightly go into the other like you see here and that's fine that's just part of kind of the look of this style cake or you don't have to smooth it yeah, or you don't have to smooth it at all. I mean, you might be fine with the way it looks right after applying the bench scraper. And that's fine. But for those of you who are just looking for as smooth of a cake as possible, I wanted to show you that you can still use the Viva method. Just keep the pressure fairly light and just go back and forth. So I'm going to make my way all the way around. And then we're gonna chill the cake for maybe 15 minutes in the freezer till the icing is firm and I feel like I can easily move this cake from the uh, turntable to our cake pedestal. So we will meet back in just a few minutes. Okay, so I've just taken this out of the freezer. It was in the freezer for about 15 minutes. The icing is pretty firm at this point. I wanted to firm it up before moving it to the pedestal because the icing is gonna be less likely to bend, which means we're less likely to have any issues with hairline cracking or anything like that. I do have two cake boards beneath this cake because it's a heavier cake, but still, it's, I think it's better if you do have the freezer space to just chill it for a little while or in the refrigerator. Okay. So I have my icing already in place over here. Okay, so I think it looks nice here on the pedestal. Um, we're gonna add some clouds on top. So let's just start that really quickly. 
Um, I have a piping bag here. It's fitted with actually no piping tip at all. I just snipped off the end. So just snip it off however wide you would like your icing to come out. Mine's probably about um, a little under a 10 size uh, circle, what a tip 10 would be. Um, and then I'm just going to pipe on some clouds all over. I might actually, I think I want it to come out a little bit thicker. Let me move closer. And whenever you snip your piping bags, just make sure to go back in because they, they might be a little bit flat and the opening might be a little bit flat, which will make your icing come out a little bit flat. So just go and squeeze it in the opposite direction to make the opening more rounded. Okay. So I'm just going to pipe a lot of balls of icing in different sizes, some larger than others. And I can't see what I'm doing, so I'll probably take a break in a minute and come to the front and finish my piping. But you see, you could make your clouds all on one level, or if you wanna add a little depth, here and there you can pipe balls of icing onto other balls of icing just to add some height. So I will just continue this process and we'll meet back once our cake is covered. Okay, so our little rainbow cake is finished. You can see that I added a big mound of icing on top to represent our clouds. And we have a gold ribbon, a glittery gold ribbon on the bottom of the cake and that in our case, because it's close to St. Patrick's Day, it represents the pot of gold, but it's also just a fun little accent to have, whether it's St. Patrick's Day or not. Uh, but I love the cake. I hope that you learned something from this tutorial, and we'll see you next time.